Well, hello, STEM2 students. I hope things are going well for you. Uh, what I want to do in this video is take a moment to explain uh, selected questions from this review. So my intention is to work out part A for each of the questions that are on here. Um, and on this one, we'll do probably a couple of them. This one will do part A, and this one will do part A as well. So I'll do them in a series of, of mini videos. Um, I'll just record this first one, and that way you only have to watch the ones that you really need to check. So uh, you'll also be able to fast forward through them to check your work. So hope things go well. Uh, certainly ask questions if you have them, and um, be, make sure you're prepared for that exam tomorrow. So first question here wants to know the scale factor. So the first thing we need to check is uh, to see if the polygons are similar and if you notice there's sets of angles the 75s match the 95s the 110 and the 80s correspond um, it doesn't say which number they want on top so I usually try to find the sets that match up and I kind of color code so these ones match but notice there's a variable so I'm not going to use that for my scale factor the red ones match or they correspond if we were to rotate the shapes and since those um, those values uh, don't contain a variable, that's that creates our scale factor. So 3.5 over 10.5. If you wanted to write it the other way, you could, since it didn't say small to big or big to small. Um, you should hopefully notice this reduces to a third. If not, you can stick with uh, 3.5 over 10.5. Okay, so what does that mean? That means the smaller one is a third the size for each of the lengths as the larger. So if you take this times a third, you get three and a half. Okay, so I'm going to show you two different ways to do the problem. Um, probably the way you learn in class is just a proportion. So I'm going to finish matching the parts up. I always, again, I like to color code. So let's see what else. The X and the 4.5. So that way everything's kind of matched up. So um, what I'm going to do is always stick with the, the scale factor set. So I'm going to stick with this 3.5 over 10.5. And, and notice I put the smaller number on top. So I'm just going to match that up with any other set of these. Um, if I'm solving for x, X is in the blue set, so I'm going to do small shape over big shape. So I'm going to do X over 4.5. And then we're just going to cross multiply. So we get 10.5X equals 3.5 times 4.5, which is 15.75. And then we're going to divide that by 10.5. So one and a half. So x equals one and a half. And again, just to check for reasonability, one and a half is a third as big as the corresponding side. So if you take 4.5 divided by 3, notice you get 1.5. All right, so y, this set here, we could do y corresponds to 15. So y corresponds to 15. And again, you're always matching it back up with the numbers you picked for your scale factor. You just need one set of matched up numbers that don't contain a variable. Otherwise, we get two variables and you can't solve the equation. All right, so if we cross multiply, we're going to take 3.5 times 15 and divide it by 10 and a half. 0.5 times 15 divided by 10 and a half. And that's 5. So y would be 5. And again, notice the, the uh, scale factor here. This is 1 third. Yeah, that would make sense that y is 5. And then to get z, um, we're going to say z matches up with with uh, 24. So z over 24 
equals, and again, you, some of you might have looked at this and said, oh, scale factor is a third. What's a third of 24? Well, that should be 8. We should get the same thing by cross multiplying. So z and 24 correspond. Again, going back to the red set, 3.5 over 10.5. If we cross multiply, we're going to take 24 times 3.5 divided by 10.5. And, and that, as you see, that gives us 8. So z is 8. All right. Um, go ahead and try the second one. And um, you can always ask for help in class if you need it.